Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Corey here with Wilder Woman. And it's March. It's freaking March 2019 already. I think I saw it was, it was either a tweet or a meme of a tweet somebody had posted on Facebook, which was like, um, so January and February are just bonus tracks from 2018 and 2019 will officially start on March 1st. And I was like, I'm okay with that <laughs> because February, woo, February, um, February was a short month, obviously it's only 28 days long. Um, but man, it felt like a whole world of stuff was just packed into February. I got sick twice. Yay! <laughs> As of this recording, I am 37 weeks along in my pregnancy. So I'm getting to the tail end. And let me tell you, being sick and pregnant sucks. It really sucks. It just takes the life out of you makes the illness that much worse because there's only so many medications you can take as well. There's only so many, you know, essential oils that are supportive for your immune system as well. When you're pregnant, you really need to be careful about concentration, um, you know, diluting properly, etc. And just, I took a hit. I took a big hit. And I think that one of the things, one of the big lessons that I learned in February, as far as my depth year is concerned, that I need to be more consistent. So one of the things that I noticed is, like, for example, missing days of taking my vitamins and doing my daily spiritual work you know, getting up in the morning, I've got an established practice, I get up in the morning, I pull a card, I see what's going on for the day, I take my vitamins, I sit, I pull a creator card as well for the week ahead, and I, I plan out what I'm going to do for that day. And just kind of get into the mindset as well, I also watch spiritual YouTubers, which I'll link a couple people in the description box below of folks that I've been binge watching in the morning as I'm getting ready, you know, doing my daily routine, brushing my teeth, getting dressed, etc. cetera, um, when I come out of the shower. So we'll be talking about those in a minute. But there are days where I would be rushing or miss that, and it did not go so well for me. <laughs> Just, it set my whole day ablaze, basically. And hurt my immune system. So that's one of the things that I noticed. Being inconsistent with sleep times, being inconsistent with my spiritual practice, forgetting to take vitamins, any one of those things seem to just rattle me and wear me down. So something that I'm definitely going to focus on here in March especially as I go out on maternity leave, is really establishing a good practice and keeping consistent with that practice all the way through coming back to work and, you know, really pushing for that. So just, just one major lesson that February threw me, consistency consistency, consistency, consistency. Um, one of the things that I was consistent with and did dive deep with, you know, that I've been working with a singular deck through the month, at least in my personal work. <clears throat> and so for February, I used the Numinous Tarot, which is, you guys, this deck is just gorgeous and glorious. And I really, really, really loved working with this during February. I kind of feel like I just really didn't have enough time with it. It's such an amazing deck. It's so diverse. 
and I love the way that the suits are laid out with instead of pentacles, we have tomes. Instead of wands, we have candles. The swords are bells. And the uh, chalices are actually vials. So we have two of bells here instead of two of swords. Also, the <clears throat> court cards are gender neutral titles. So we have the dreamers or the pages, the explorers or the knights, the creators are the queens, and then we have, I think it's the mystics or the kings. So, you know, instead of the priestess, we have the diviner. So we have, you know, gender neutral titles for everything. This is an amazing all-inclusive deck, Mystic of Candles. This is actually, the equivalent would be the King of Wands. And just really, really, really great deck. Look at that strength card. Got this giant bear here instead of a lion. I just, the creativity that Noel put into this deck is nothing short. I mean, they did a great job. They really did. Look at that Wheel of Fortune. Ugh. So, loved this. Loved working with it. Loved everything about it. And I really... I'm probably going to keep working with it again and again throughout the year. This deck is just so juicy and so magical. I don't, I can't get away with it and it, it, get away from it. And it's got, look at this death card, you guys. And you know how I feel about the death card. Like if you fuck up the death card, I don't like the deck. So look at that. Look at how glorious that death card is. That transformation. It's beautiful. It, it is. This whole deck. It's just amazing. And I feel like it's so easy to connect with. You know. And read with. The shapes. The colors. Everything about it. It's just. You know. And we've got this extra major arcana here with the numinous just kind of the the expanse the creation if you will uh, I love it and one of the absolute favorite lovers cards I have ever seen in a deck look at that the connection, the pathways, the choices, it's just everything. It's everything. So really, really loved spending February with this deck. It was probably my favorite thing for the month of February was diving into this. And I still want to dive more into it, but I have other plans for March. So I'm going to set it aside. I'm probably going to keep it on my reading space here and continue to read you know, for clients with this deck throughout March, because it's just, it's so fun and beautiful and just, it's like, like instead of the devil, we have the shadow. Oh, there's just, it's, there's something about this deck that is just unlike any other deck I have ever come across in its symbolism, in its diversity, in its representation. And I just, I can't get enough of it. I just can't. I'm like addicted to this deck. So loved, loved having that as my companion through February. And really, I've been focused mostly on 
kind of trying to get back to my roots. There's been a lot of transformation in general in February for me in realizing what works for me and what doesn't in my job, in my relationship, in my business, in a lot of things, really a lot of things. So I've been trying to get back into writing more. I've been trying to really find some balance. I had an amazing, an amazing six month forecast reading with Kellyanne Maddox at the beginning of the month. And she really nailed like February for me. And I'm certain she's nailed all of the, you know, next five months as well. But February in particular being about balance and struggling to find that balance. If I had one takeaway card from February, it would be temperance <laughs> because trying to strike a balance between being mom, being the workaholic person that I am, investing in my business, being there for the groups that I'm a part of as well as trying to take care of myself physically as a pregnant woman, this was a struggle. It was a huge struggle for me this month. I'm a Virgo. I dive into everything feet first. How can I help? How can I be of service? How can I do this? And stretching myself too thin is common. And it's something that in 34 years, I just consistently still do. <laughs> it's the only thing that I probably do consistently um, is take on too much. And then my body shuts down and is like, whoa, you need to stop. Hence the illness twice in one month. So that really was the big lesson for February, like I said, is finding consistency, finding balance, learning to take care of myself and say no to things, right? So some things have kind of come to a head here in March, you know, as February rolled to a close, some realizations about how involved that I want to be in certain groups, what type of a role that I want to take on, and how I want to show up for myself, in my business, in my family. <sighs> All really big questions. And I think that's really the focus of my depth here. Because as I look through everybody else's depth year and I'm checking in with them, a lot of people are focused on money, and I get that. And that's how my depth year started, was focusing on, I'm not going to buy this, I'm not going to buy that, I'm really going to focus on what I have here. And what I realized is that's not what I really need to go deep with. What I need to go deep with are the techniques and things that I've learned, right? And putting that methodology back into practice. So not necessarily avoiding acquiring new tools or avoiding, you know, spending money or avoiding really diving into something new, but more so remembering what I have and where I've been and the journey I've taken to get here and sharing that and expanding upon that, exploring more. I've been going through old journals, old grimoires, and looking at classes that I took back in 2008, 2012, you know, like really old stuff <laughs> and revisiting it. And looking at it and going, yeah, I remember that technique. When was the last time that I did that? 
you know, when was the last time that I tried this or did this or, you know, took this, you know, a shamanic journey in this way or did this, you know, energetic body meditation or, you know, did this type of dream work and really remembering what it felt like to really explore those techniques, what it felt like to sit in the class as I was writing these notes, learn the technique, put it into practice. And so now what I want to do is start kind of, you know, organizing those notes and go back and, and spend, you know, a couple weeks at a time with each of them seeing what still works for me and what doesn't and you know the stuff that does work for me reincorporating that into my practice revising the notes expanding upon them exploring that topic a little bit more so that's kind of where i'm at right now and that's what i'm diving into march with so i'm looking through like original cord cutting notes and I'm, you know, creating a, cl- a workshop for how I do cord cutting today in, you know, my Facebook group, Wilder Woman Facebook group. But I'm revisiting old notes and books, you know, protection books that have cord cutting referenced. I'm revisiting those and checking them out and just uh, remembering what it was like to sit in that class way back when, when I first learned some of these techniques and reading like the notes that I had from the class of like, ooh, this chord and that chord and just kind of comparing to how I feel about it today and what they look like for me today. So it's been a very interesting past just week that I've started doing this and I plan to continue that on through March. So March is, you know, more getting back to my roots of like different shielding techniques that I've tried over the years, cord cutting, releasing. And I think a large part of where that's coming from is the Morgan has really come back into my life hard and she's reminding me of, when I started my path, because she was the first deity that I had ever worked with, she was the first one to show up for me when I called. And this is way back, way back when I won't won't give an exact date, but a long time ago. (laughs) And she comes back into my life periodically, cyclically. And now's the time for her to come back in. She's come back in. She wants to work with me on a few things. And this type of work is the type of work that we do together. So it makes perfect sense that this would be the type of work that I would start with, with her having like come back into my life to be like, hello, we got some stuff to work on. So, you know, revisiting my past, revisiting my roots, the roots of my practice, all of the candle magic that I used to do when I was a teenager, working in my shamanic temple or working in my astral temple, doing shamanic journeying, connecting with the Fae in the fairy realm was a huge part of my practice when I first started down this pathway. And a lot of that fell to the wayside and starting to realize that and realize how much I missed it because I got distracted by going, you know, with this technique or that technique or, you know, exploring this, um, you know, has, has been eye opening. So with that said, March, I ended up buying two new decks. Okay. And these were decks that have been on my wish list for a really long time. And the reason why is because one of those decks is my focus deck for March. In fact, it's sitting on my working altar right now, so I can't show you the deck fully, but 
is they're both Dame Darcy decks, obviously, the Queen Alice Tarot. And so I bought this one and her Mermaid Tarot, which has been on my wish list God, for probably like four years now. <laughs> Long time. Uh, and just never bought it. Why didn't I buy it? I don't know. I don't really have a reason for not buying it. But I wanted to get the Queen Alice, and I figured I will cross the Mermaid Tarot off my list at the same time. Now, the reason why I wanted to buy the Queen Alice, aside from the fact that I really love this artwork, like, <sighs> stunning, stunning artwork. My goodness. Love the stickers that came with all of this. These are the backs to the cards. Okay. And we've got, you know, lovely little insert here that also came with the deck. Um, Alice in Wonderland was the theme of my wedding. And this month, month of March, is my 10 year wedding anniversary. I know, right? <laughs> Ah, uh, I don't feel like I'm old enough to have a 10-year wedding anniversary, but there you have it. I did get married at a young age. You know, I'm 33 now, got married at 23, and Alice in Wonderland was a huge part of my childhood. That movie was a huge part of my childhood, and so I'm also revisiting books, you know, the actual stories, okay, by Lewis Carroll. This one is just kind of a modern cover, but it's it's actually Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And then as well, I have this fictional book that I'm starting this month, and this is by Frank Better, New York Times bestselling author. This is The Looking Glass Wars. This is basically a retelling of the original story, but with a, like, young adult twist, okay, fantasy twist. So I'm really looking forward to diving into these. I bought this book, I kid you not, you guys, this is how much that I've really fallen off the wagon with reading. Okay, which reading's a huge part of my life, huge part, and I don't make time for it anymore like I used to. So I bought this book probably, when did this come out? Let me look. Hold on. Pause for a second. Sorry, guys. This came out ages ago, and I do mean ages ago. I want to say I was dating my husband <laughs> when this came out. First published in the United States, blah, 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 2007 is when this book was printed. <laughs> I have not read it. I bought it when it came out and it has, when it came out in paperback and it's literally been sitting on my shelf the entire time. So this book has gone with me through four moves, okay, and I still haven't read it. That's bad. <laughs> now you see why I needed a depth here? <laughs> so March, because it's my 10-year anniversary, I'm revisiting Alice in Wonderland, and I'm revisiting it in a unique way. So aside from working with the deck, and reading these books, what I want to do is look at each of the archetypes that are in the realm of Alice in Wonderland and look at the magic there and see what type of lessons that archetype has and how I can incorporate that type of magic 
into my practice? Like, how can I explore that archetype with the magical tools that I have at my disposal? Okay, the magical techniques, spiritual practice, even going so far as to journey to the astral realm to visit Alice's Wonderland and even meet a few of those characters. Obviously going completely shielded with guides so that I <laughs> don't get into trouble because <laughs> Alice got into a lot of trouble traveling through Wonderland, but going through secured guided meditations um, to visit some of these characters and just kind of explore what they have to teach me, like sitting with the caterpillar and asking him questions, diving into his mind. What's there that you can share with me, you know, and what can I share with you? And then what can I take back to dive deeper with? So that's going to be an interesting experience because I haven't really explored a lot of fictional realms in that way. Yes, I have visited the Fey realm. Yes, I have visited a few of the nine realms in Yggdrasil, you know, in the Norse pantheon, you know, the nine realms <clears throat> of the world tree. And as, as well as some other planes as well, specific to the pantheon that I was working with, right? But a fictional realm? I haven't tried to go down that road. So this is going to be very experimental. I have no idea how this is going to go. But let's just say that my recap for March is probably going to be a little interesting. <laughs> So really going to explore and dive into Alice's Wonderland and see what comes up for me. In addition to reading these books, rewatching the movie, the, the classic cartoon, as well as the new revamped ones, um, or live action ones, really, that Disney did, um, and working with the Queen Alice Tarot daily and seeing what comes up for me with those. But the exploration of the realm, that part is what's going to be truly interesting. So we'll see how it goes. And you know, what it's going to be like for me to explore those archetypes and see what's there. I did pick up a couple other things as well. I've realized that as far as spending money, I do want to invest in tools that strengthen my practice and support indie creators. So I've picked up a couple more candles. You guys know how much I love, 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 Light, and Legacy candles. This was a collaboration between Love, Light, and Legacy and the amazing Lucy Lloyd Rise. Okay, you can find her as Rise on Instagram. I'll link her profile below. You guys, this candle. This candle is just freaking amazing. And you can see there's Rainbow Moonstone at the top. Cannot wait to burn this guy. This is a 20 plus hour burn time. It's Reiki infused. Okay, so... Lucy poured Reiki into each one of these candles before shipping, and I think they might be sold out, but you can book sessions with Lucy. She does, she offers Akashic record readings, which those are amazing. So definitely check her out as well. I'll try and see if Celine has a website or something. I know that I'm the first person to get one of these from her, but she crocheted. Look at this. This took like over five hours to make. It's white and red. Okay. Or more like this. Yeah, it's white 
in red, and it's really to represent Frere and Persephone, who are my patron and matron deities. And this is an altar cloth. So this hasn't gone on my altar yet. This is a 12 by 12 square. And it's just, you guys, this just feels amazing. And I love it. So I'm going to be cleansing this one off and dedicating it and putting it on my working altar. Um, as I transition everything over to get ready for Ostara. So, oh, gorgeous. And we'll probably have this as my working candle through March as well. I'm not quite sure yet. I might have to save it. I might have to save it and use another candle. Instead, I might, I don't know where it went. It may already be over by my altar, but I have the take your moment candle for March. Is it March? Or did, am I looking at the February candle? I have a take your moment candle. <laughs> I don't think March is shipped yet because it's only like the third. Um, the take your moment candle, which I think I've told you guys about, which is a candle subscription from Love, Light, and Legacy. This was the January candle that I'm still burning. Um, oh, it smells like cookies. Oh, so one of these might end up just being my working candle for March. I don't know. Right now, this one is still in my office because I have used it to, it's replaced my sacred space candle in my office for when I do client readings. So I had to trade that out and I still had this one. I didn't want to burn it because it smells so yummy, but these take forever to burn. So they're kind of perfect for being magical working candles. And I'm just, uh, just gonna sit here apparently and huff candles in front of you guys. <laughs> Go get these candles. <laughs> you will love them too, I promise. So that <laughs> will probably be my working candle and then I'll save the rise one for something really special. I don't know, I have to think about that. And then as well, the last thing that I got and again, I'll try and link to everybody if I can find their profiles and things. You guys, these little magical poppets. They're amazing. This is a custom guy. And then this one's for creativity. He was pre-made. So these are little runic poppets that uh, are now mine and haven't been dedicated yet, but they will. And since, you know, creativity is my word of the year. And look at that guy's hair. I had to get him. So these guys are freaking amazing. I want to say they were $18 each. And just, they're so freaking cute. So I have been picking up things to help support my existing practice and also that the money's not going to another book per se, or it's not going to just feed the folks at Amazon. <laughs> if that makes sense. It's not going to another set of plain candles from Ikea. This is actually going towards tools for my practice Things that I already use, already working with altar cloths, candles, you know, poppets, things like that. I support small creators. And then I get a really well-crafted tool to work with as I go deeper. So I think it's a pretty fair trade, at least for me in my depth here. Like I said, the big realization that I had was in the fact that for me, it's not about decluttering necessarily, although I've done a fair bit of that and I still have a ways to go. 
for me, this has been about revisiting my roots, finding that balance, finding that consistency, revisiting my roots, and exploring the journey that I've taken so far and how far that I've come and what's transformed, what's changed, and what stayed the same. You know, what has stayed the way it was since I first learned it? And is it time to experiment with that? Is it time to change it up? Is it time to explore other avenues for that technique or that method? Whatever the topic might be. So I'm really excited. I have a renewed sense of excitement for March. I think it's going to be brilliant. I have several other yummy topics to toss your way in videos on this channel. So I hope you will join me on this journey, especially as I navigate through the whole Alice archetype thing, because that's going to be interesting. I might even try and do like a couple of videos about it in between before we get to the recap, just so that you can kind of see how we're progressing here. But we'll see how it goes. I do have to give birth this month, so there might be an interruption. In fact, there's guaranteed to be one. I just don't know when it's going to be. So stay tuned. I will keep you all posted. Thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that bell so that you're notified when a new video uploads because freaking YouTube, they don't want to tell you shit. So you got to ring the bell. Otherwise, it doesn't tell you, you know, just being subscribed. You still have to like scroll through and find the videos that you want. But if you hit the bell, it's going to pop up with a notification saying, hey, new video got uploaded. All right. So I will keep you all posted, lovelies. Thank you so, so much for watching. I cannot wait to see you in the next video already. But until then, blessed be.